So this is going to be a quick tutorial, hopefully quick, on how to make and import assets for Unreal Engine 4 and more specifically the uh, squad development kit um, which is free here which is the game that I play and that has a very very large modding community. So three programs that I'm going to be using are Maya to model and to UV map and then I'll be using Substance Painter to texture a bit like this model here and then obviously the squad development kit is the engine which we're going to or Unreal Engine is the engine we're going to be importing our static item into. So what I've done here is I've already made the start of my little smoke grenade. It's very very basic just for the purposes of the tutorial. Um, what I then will do is I will then UV map it. I will then make a high and low poly uh, mesh which the high poly will then be baked onto the low poly. Now I'm not going to explain the modeling, I'm not going to explain the UV mapping, I'm not going to explain the baking uh, or the, the high and low poly as there are lots and lots of tutorials on that already. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of Substance Painter and importing that into uh, Unreal Engine 4. Now what you want to do is once this is UV mapped you're going to want to select your model which for me is just two parts. You're going to want to go File Export. Now I'm using Maya but there are alternate programs 3ds Max and Blender are the other two that you should be using. Um, Blender is free, so I recommend that for beginners. But if you're a student, you can get your hands on Autodesk products. 3ds Max is very, very good, and so is Maya. Um, we can export this selection. We would then choose the FPX export, it has to be in the XPX format, and we're going to export that wherever we want. And we're going to export a low and high, but like I said, I won't explain that. Now, in Substance Painter, if this is the program you're using, you're going to want to press Control New, you're going to want to select your mesh. We're going to find our little grenade, so we have Smoke Grenades, GRMAFC, and this is a low poly, there is no high poly on this, but that doesn't matter, we can still bake. So I highly recommend watching the algorithmic tutorials on how to use Substance Painter. That will give you uh, so, so much to think about. Uh, and it goes into a lot more detail than I ever could. I'm um, still watching myself, still learning stuff every day. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to show you the, the, the texturing um, or the modeling, but rather how to just get your assets inside of Real Engine. So I'm going to open my... Uh, actual GRMAFC with F5 Fuse that I made a couple of days ago. So this is finished. Um, as you can see, here's my my map. Uh, so the flattened out surfaces, which applies uh, the the image gets applied to, and then here's here's my model here. Um, it for me looks fine. Uh, it's not perfect. There is this weird seam, but I just couldn't be bothered to fix that. I think it's just maybe because it's too close, or maybe just a problem with my mesh. I haven't quite worked it out yet. Um, but once you've finished texturing your item in Substance Painter, it's very, very simple. Uh, I've got a 2048, so it's 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels wide. That's the size of my image that I'm applying to the mesh. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to file uh, export textures bring up this window here now this config here has little um, presets and you see there's lots of them we're going to be using the Unreal Engine 4 packed preset um, and you can see my material is called GRMAFCF5 and we're going to choose where we're going to save it so I have saved mine uh, in to Foreign Legion, which is the one I'm working on at the moment. I'll make a new folder called GRMA FCF5. We'll click on that and we're going to select that folder. So we're going to export it as the document size. You can export it 4K and 8K. 
4K and 8K is, is reserved for vehicles really, or very, very large things. Uh, to be honest, 204 is quite big for this, but it's going to be quite close to the screen, so I want it to look good. So then we're just going to press export. Now, so this is exporting your three maps. I'm going to open folder here, which will open on my other monitor. So you can see it's exported four images. Um, this is your base color. You'll have your normal, which kind of uh, helps on real work out how to shine the light, how to bounce the light off objects to make them look a bit more 3D and reflectivity and stuff. And then you've got your occlusion, roughness, and metallic, which is, um, well, how shiny it is, how rough it looks, and where the shadows kind of land, that kind of stuff. Now, once we have our maps, all we need now is our FBX. Our FBX will be wherever you saved it and brought it into Sultan Painter. Hopefully, you'll know where you saved it. I would have saved mine in Smoke Grenades. So, there we go. Here it is. For some reason, Windows isn't showing the font now. Whatever. So, you can open it 3D view and you can, you can see the model here. Okay. Now, next, you're going to want to open the Squad Development Kit. If it is your first time launching, it's going to take up to four hours to launch because when it launches, it gets stuck at 83%, and at that point, it's compiling shaders. So it just means you have to download less stuff, but it will take a long, long time to open. Don't worry about it. Um, and when you open it, there's going to be a few more errors. Don't worry about them. I'll, I'll show you about them anyway. So you've launched the squad development kit now, and you're going to be greeted. Uh, by a screen like this, there'll be a little window that will pop up with a load of errors. Just click X on them, don't worry about them, it'll be fine. Um, you'll then want on hand your three uh, maps, three images here for your texture, and you'll also want your FBX, uh, the, the, so the, the mesh, the model. Um, we're going to import them into Unreal Engine 4. It, it's, it's really simple. Now, I'm going to drag these off screen. Okay, so I can, I can work with them. Now, you're going to want to have a nice foldering system with your SDK. Mine's not that nice, but you're going to want to make like a models folder. Um, you see all this the stuff I've imported into the SDK, just so it doesn't get mixed up with the original Squad SDK content. Um, so I've Got a little bit of system here. Now you're going to want to make a new folder. So add new, go to folder, and we're going to call this gr. Oops, uh, what was it? Gr. Sorry, I can't remember what it was called. So that's your folder of which we're going to import our stuff in. Now to get, make sure the size and the lighting is all right, we're going to want to open one of the squad maps. Now, the easiest map to open is Jensen's range. It's the smallest. And like opening the editor, uh, the first time it's going to take a while, but the more you do it, the faster it'll open. Um, so it's just a case of waiting, go have pizza, watch a movie, whatever. Um, but eventually, it will open. I've got 16 gig of RAM, which is enough for Jensen's range. You might get away with 8 gig of RAM for Jensen's range, but it still might crash. So 16 gigabyte is the minimum, really. Uh, and if you put the SDK on a SSD, this process is going to be a little bit quicker. Mine's on the hard drive. So this has almost finished loading in, and what we're going to do is going to import this asset. We are going to assign the materials to it, so it looks like it did when we were in the Substance Painter. We're then going to set up a collision, so that, say, someone walks into your asset, they don't walk through it. And uh, we're going to set up a physics material, so if someone shoots it, it'll make the ding sound, uh, just like all the other assets. And we're going to set up LODs, which are level of details. So this is my 
Chitlin's range, obviously you can see it's got a load of a load of crap in it, just from other stuff I've imported. Um, to move around in the editor, right click it's kind of a, a pivot like this, move your head. Uh, you can alt left click, which kind of pivots around whatever you're looking at. You can middle mouse button is pan and W A S D is move once you're holding right click or pan. So we're going to go back to our content, go to our models where we made the folder before, which is smoke grenade, and then we're going to drag and drop our FBX in. Wait for the little plus sign to pop up. It's as simple as that. We're going to drag it in. We can uh, leave the import scale as one because we made it to scale. Um, it's an FBX, so we don't need to rotate it. If you put in an OBJ, you'll need to rotate the X by 90 degrees, I think. Um, we're going to import the materials, import the textures. We can leave this all as it is. Press import, and there we go. Now, it'll appear here, that's this blue line, because it's a static mesh. And we can just drag it into here. Now one thing I forgot to mention which you're going to want to make sure your pivot is at the bottom of your product which mine isn't but that's just in your editor here so this isn't the actual grenade I made but at the moment if I, if I send a pivot Whatever. So you obviously see the center of the pivot is in the middle of the item. You're going to want that, okay, at the bottom of your of your static, so that when you drag it in, it automatically detects that that's the bottom and it will sit on surfaces rather than see when you saw I dragged this in. It kind of sits halfway through the table, which means you have to manually drag it up. But that's something you'll keep remembering to do. I haven't keep remembering to do it. So we've got our meshing, we've got the material here, which we'll import with it. Next, we're going to want to drag in our three maps. So you just want to select these, drag it in, wait for the little plus and release, and it'll drag them all in. It'll come up with here. This is okay, you can leave them. And now we need to assign these materials to this material okay so you're going to want to double click on this material which will open a window like this you're going to want to drag this off to the right a bit this is called a, a, a blueprint or whatever i think not sure and then um you want to delete this bit we don't need that bit so i'm going to right click i'm going to type in texture and i'm going to select this texture sample here and now we need three of these because we've got three maps so I can control C, control V on these, put them in, and then we're going to want to assign a map to each one of these. So we go down to our texture base here, and we're going to search for our our map, our, our material. So what do we call it? We call it GR underscore. So here you go, they pop up all three of them here. So you want to assign the base color to this one. normal to the middle one and the occlusion roughness metallic to the bottom one now with your base color you want to grab the white node and attach it to base color here with the normal again you're going to grab the white node and correct it to normal pretty self-explanatory but this one is a little bit different you want to grab your red node and attach it to ambient occlusion the blue goes to metallic and the green goes to roughness. Then you're going to want to hit save, which your material will appear here. It won't look right because it's been put onto a sphere. But when you look at your modeling game now, I'm going to change our camera speed, which is here. Obviously, you can see it's imported really nice. So, say you're making an ammo crate or whatever. 
we can go to our French ammo crate which I've made here, let a little start on. You see here's a grenade I imported the other day. But we can just drag these on now. Press E to rotate, a bit like Maya. And you can position it. And there you go. So that's an asset, but we're not quite finished. What we need to do is we need to set up our level of details and our collision. Now for that we're not going to use the grenade, we're going to use a different model. We're going to use our large radar, it should work, I haven't set it up with this. So if you double click on your static mesh for your item, you'll see here's my radar. Ooh. Like and first up we're going to have a look at our collision so if you press on collision here as you can see this purple collision when someone walks into it if they walk into it here they're not going to be able to progress past this bit and that's going to be irritating and not very realistic um, so for the time being we can use go to your static mesh settings here collision capacity you can go use simple collision use complex decision that's it use complex collision as simple okay so that's worked out per polygon now eventually um, you'll want to start making your own custom collision but for this it's fine I don't think the hit on performance is significant so we can hit save now we also want to set up our lots so basically uh, a level of detail is so when you look at something on your map as while you're playing the game rather than it loading the whole model in it will load bits of it if it's far away so it will look the same but it won't be loading many as, as many tries in or uh, uh, as many polygons in so it just it's a performance saving feature so we're going to use auto lod you can make your own lods but auto lod seems to work very well at the moment so we're going to press large lod from our LOD settings um, and see so LOD0 is going to be the, the the full model and then you can see LOD1, LOD2, LOD3 now it's worked out by screen space so how much screen size the model takes up which will be here in the left so you can see the screen size of the model now is 0.518053 ok so none of these are anywhere close to it so we're going to want to auto compute lot distances. We're going to want to untick that. So we'll turn collision off, and we're going to. So once the character is standing this close, he's going to get the full model. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Once he's this far away, you don't really need to load the full model in. So we're going to change our LOD1, which the higher the LOD the, the further away you're going to be. So our screen size now is at 0 0.01. So we're going to change this to 0 0.1. So when we join, zoom out now, press and scroll, okay, it would have changed to LOD1. Let's say in the top left, if you watch the top left here, it changes from LOD0 to LOD1. So at the moment we've got 6,842 triangles loaded in, but as we move to LOD1, we've got 3,420. But as you can see, the model looks pretty exactly much the same, okay, but we've, we've halved the triangles. Now I want to zoom out a little bit further. Screen size is 0 0.033. So 0 0.033. Press enter. And if we zoom out one more, it's changed to log 2. We've now got 1700 tries in. Now you can see a little bit of changing. Not really, so that's really, really good still. If you do it from my height, it's a little bit better because it's more reflective of what the player will see. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. Yeah, so as you can see, it's it's, it's got some little errors here, but we're not too fussed about that. If we go and zoom in, we can go top right here, and we can select level two. We can see 
what's actually happening. So it's actually not the mesh, it's the texture. So that means you still won't be able to see anyone through it, which is fine. So we can leave it at that. Let's go to Waddle on again. Zoom out. And then the final LOD, we're going to assign to 0 0.008. So, 0, so 0 0.008. Press Enter. So if we zoom out again, it'll change to LOD 3. And there you go. So that's only 854 tries. And what we're going to do is we want to try and fit another LOD in. The more LODs, the better. The more uh, polys will save. So we can drag this up to 5, and it was on 4. Hit apply changes. Your lot will appear. Now if we go to production settings, percent triangles for lot 3 was 12.5%. Okay. So percentage triangles for our lot 4 is going to want to be at something like 4.8%. Maybe we can get away with and screen size we want to be about 0 0.006 apply changes if we zoom out there you go so it's 328 tries and it looks a little bit messed up but you're quite far away and that's going to be fine you can go back and you can mess around and get them quite right that just takes a little bit more time so that's the general idea of, of lodding setting up your level of details. You can then hit save. And then if we press Alt P, ignore that, press yes, this is gonna play in the editor. So we've loaded in, we press F11, it'll go full screen. And press Shift P, we'll obviously go to add cameras, it's just the squad one. So as you zoom out, oh, there's a rock in the way. It's, it's gonna use our LODs, but we're really quite far away, so we can't tell that the model has changed. If you look at it, you can see it change every now and then a little bit, but I think we've loaded that pretty well. So we'll be on the furthest lot now, so that's only going to be four tries there. So as we zoom in, can we see a change? Only a tiny bit, but that's fine. It changes with the shadows, so. I'm pretty happy with that. So now the LODs have been set up. Press 11 to go back to full screen. And now we can assign uh, a fist mount. So if you double through any material again, as you can see, we'll have these uh, nodes where we left off. We've already set up collision. So the final thing is your fist mount. If you go to your fist mounts over here in the top left, you can choose one of these. So we can maybe pick armor thick, armor thin, armor medium. We'll pick armor thin. Press save, see what this sounds like. X on that. Press Alt P to load back in. F11 for full screen. And you'll see if we shoot this, it's now got collision. So I haven't set the collision up for, say, this. Oh, I have actually. What haven't I set up the collision for? The grenade. So as you can see, it's going completely through it. That's actually detecting this other crate. So collision's been set up, I'm happy with the noise, I'm happy with the, the bullet decals. And that is an asset ready for your map. So that concludes my tutorial. I hope I haven't missed anything. If you've got any questions, grab me on Discord, grab me in, uh, grab me in the YouTube comments, whatever. Um, I hope it was useful. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching.